Good evening, everybody. My name is Dave Rivett, and I'm the Special Operations Chief and Emergency Manager for Queen Anne County Department of Emergency Services. And I want to thank you all very much for coming and, and seeing us tonight and talking to us about your unmet needs and what have you. Uh, before we get started, though, uh, Commissioner Jim Moran would like a few minutes. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the Queen Anne's County Commissioners, I, I too also want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to come in here tonight. Uh, we have every department here to answer any and all questions you have. And I would just like to say thank you to Delmarva Power, our volunteer fire department, our Department of Emergency Services for uh, pulling together on, on such a, uh, for lack of better terms, historic event for Queen Anne's County. Uh, and just, just very pleased with that, so. I mean, one, one of the greatest things that, uh, that I experienced that morning was walking up to seeing well over 100 volunteer firemen sitting there ready, ready to go to check every home in uh, Bay City. And it was, it was a well-oiled machine. And, and, you know, from the county commissioners, it's a sense of pride. So again, thank you for that. And, and Dave, we're going to set it off here and, and get some questions answered. Thank you so much, sir. So real quickly, we'll go for a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, it's important. Everybody needs to know where the restrooms are. If you go out the door right across the hallway, we have the men's and ladies there, and also down the fifth grade hallway, uh, there's additional restrooms there. If we do have an emergency tonight, and let's hope not, because we've already had enough, I think, in the last week and a half, uh, we'll all go out the door if it stops raining for five minutes, and we'll meet in the parking lot just in case there is an emergency. Uh, tonight, it's about you folks talking to us. We need to hear from you what the unmet needs are, if there's any gaps, and how we can further assist you with recovery. Um, what I'd like to do now, though, we have a lot of guests, a lot of agencies have come tonight to hear from you to try to answer your questions, and we're going to do some quick self-introductions and opening statements. So, Greg? No? Good? I'm Greg Todd, County Administrator, and I want to thank you guys for coming out. And I'm just going to turn it on over to Todd and go from there. Uh, Todd Mon, Queen Anne's County Public Works uh, Park, uh, Director of Public Works. Steve Wilson, County Commissioner, and believe me, um, these are the guys, the departments that deserve the praise because. The county commissioners were all on duty, but everything we did and could do had been done a year or two years before because it's at that point that we get the planning together, the equipment together, and the teams together that can do it. I think they did a great job, which means we did a good enough one to get it done, so thank you. I'm Russell Strickland, the executive director for the Maryland Emergency Management Agency. And I want to extend to you from the governor as well as the lieutenant governor, and again, the lieutenant governor was here right away that Monday morning, how impressed state government is with what local government did and what the community did with an event like this. Uh, we stand ready to do everything we can to assist you as you go through the recovery efforts. Uh, but again, we were extremely impressed uh, with the way things came together and, and the quickness of the operation, particularly of the local responders uh, through all of this. So again, thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening and we're, we're looking forward to hearing your comments. Thank you. Um, good evening and welcome. I'm Delegate Steve Arents. Um, I can't tell you how impressed I am with some of the things that I've witnessed with Queen Anne's County. We appreciate Governor Hogan and uh, Boyd Rutherford coming over here and all the work they did, but I had the privilege of uh, being part of this county a few years ago and was part when this emergency services team took over the county for an event. And I got to tell you what, it brings a tear to your eye almost, how, how effective they are, the response that they've given. Every phone call I've gotten from people, I've gone to the county with it, and the immediate response and the positiveness and, and the work that the people are doing and the volunteers. I could go on for a day about them, but these guys are super, and I, I think they do deserve another round of applause. Good evening. Uh, my name is Delegate Jay Jacobs. I'm one of your district rel uh, delegates. We dressed, uh, three of us dressed like the Maryland flag tonight, so we'd uh, be appropriate. And uh, first of all, I'd, I'd like to once again thank all the agencies that were part of this 
horrific event. Um, it certainly for me brought back memories. I was the mayor of Rock Hall when Isabel showed, uh, showed up about 14 years ago and uh, you know all these events are horrific in, in their own little personal way. Um, the morning after the storm I came down to emergency uh, operations and I got to tell you I was very impressed with everything that was was already in place and the decisions that had already been made and the decisions that were ready to be made I got to tell you uh, it felt good to be part uh, of this district and to watch a well oiled machine in progress I'm sure there's going to be little tweaks but for the most part uh, they did an outstanding job thank you Delegate Jeff Grice, and I'm just going to echo what these guys said. Um, you know, I was uh, I went through here uh, on Monday, then I came back on Thursday to to, uh, to to check out the recovery center, and I heard some of the stories that were that were being told that day. And and, and um, I'm just so very proud of, of Queen Anne's County. Um, you guys have done an outstanding job in the recovery. I don't know what you guys could have done any better. I'm sure that you've probably heard some stories. I'm sure that you can improve on your response. Maybe hopefully there won't be a next time. Um, but it, what I think was most impressive uh, last Thursday was the amount of uh, recovery that you guys have made um, and you know your, how you all came together, how, how the contractors came together and, and um, just the amount of uh, recovery that we've seen in just a matter of just a few days. So uh, certainly proud of you all and um, I'm just here to listen. I know that these guys are here just to listen and if there's anything that we can do um, as your delegation certainly we'll, um, we're there for you. So thank you. Uh, we have a few other guests in here if they would like to come up and introduce themselves real quickly. But I want to reach out to Queen Anne Public Schools. Uh, without them, uh, tonight we wouldn't have a place to go. They have helped us with sheltering all through this emergency. Uh, the principal operations director for the county have been with me the whole route through. I get constant phone calls, constant communications. What do you guys need so we can help the community? So, Sid Pender. Thank you. Tonight I have with me uh, Ms. Jen Schreckengast, who is principal of Mattapique Elementary School, and also have Mr. Matt Evans, who is one of our pupil personnel workers. Um, please come up and see us if you have any needs. Um, we're looking for mental health services. If you have children that are getting ready to go back to school, um, we can help out with traumatic experiences, those kinds of things with Mr. Evans. Also, if you have been displaced from your house, and your child is still planning on attending that school, please come see us because you know, we may need to make special transportation arrangements to make sure your child you know, continues to go to the same school that they were at. So please don't hesitate to come up and, and speak with us. Thank you. We have also with us tonight who has been a lot of help uh, for the community and that's Joy from the Maryland Insurance Administration. Joy. Thank you, Dave. And thank you, everyone, who's basically sort of weathered this storm together. My agency is a state agency that tries to help with any insurance questions or any insurance problems you're having with your company. So we have lots of information. And if you find out through this process that there are any bumps in the road, please get in touch with us, and we'll see what we can do to help you through it. You know, from the onset, we had, a, we had a couple big heroes that stood out right in the beginning. Uh, the four gentlemen that I need, would like you all to give a round of applause is the Ken Isle Volunteer Fire Department, all the chiefs and the president. Yes, the chief and I have a very good relationship. A lot of people misunderstand us and they're always sitting back, they're trying to stay out of the line light. But I'm gonna tell you what, what an outstanding job. And uh, Chief Slaughterback, you can stand up. He was the incident commander during the uh, initial response. There's a lot of heroes in this, uh, needless to say, and I really don't want to leave anybody out, so I won't be able to mention everybody. But another one that really helped us out from day one, I don't know if they're in here tonight. Uh, they said they were coming. Del uh, Delmarva Power. Are you here?
you know, every month we all probably share this experience that we sit there and complain about the electric bill. I don't think anybody's going to be complaining about it this month. Hi, I'm Glenn, Glenn Ankenbrand. I'm the manager of uh, engineering for uh, Delmar Power Maryland. Um, I just, we want to thank you all for understanding. Uh, we would have wished to have gotten you back on uh, even sooner, but uh, we uh, appreciate everyone understanding uh, how long it took and the damage that we took. Thank you very much, and I'm going to pass on all the well wishes and all the comments that we've received. We really appreciate it. We'll make sure all the folks that were around the clock 24 hours from 1.30 in the morning all the way through sometime Wednesday, I think. So thanks again. We also have uh, some other special guests tonight. I'd like to introduce Dr. Sia Tolley. He is the medical director for uh, Department of Emergency Services and also the health officer for Queen Anne County. Good evening and thank you for coming. As far as the health department is concerned, those individuals that have lost all of their vital records, they, I would say, recommend that you come to the health department and we will do whatever it needs to be done to make sure that you can get those vital records replaced and duplicated, specifically birth certificates. And with the children, with your immunization needed before school, do not hesitate to call and come into the health department. We will adapt and do what we need to do to make sure we're meeting all of your needs. And again, I would really like to give a round of applause to EMS, both DES and the volunteer system for what they have accomplished. Thank you. We also have a couple of my partners in crime here tonight that has uh, uh, helped me through this, uh, this whole ordeal in order to make sure we had the proper resource. And uh, Chief Scott Wheatley with our EMS division, you'd like to come up for a minute? You're good? <laughs> That's gotta be the first time. <laughs> Scott's never a, uh, a, a person for a loss of words, so that's pretty amazing. I'm going to have to write this day down. Uh, we also have with us, too, is Jim Alfrey, our communications chief. Jim, you're good? <laughs> ladies? A couple special ladies that were here tonight uh, from day one of the American Red Cross. Thank you. Thank you. I really... <laughs> I really want to commend uh, Sharon Jefferson Hawkins. She's shy, but she was our lead here um, with our volunteers. We appreciate getting the call, never want to get the call, but it is an amazing group of people you have here, and you as a community are fantastic. My name is Teresa Young. I'm the executive director of the Delmarva chapter, and we're just honored to be a part of the services for you. Thank you so much. Whoa. Got it. Do we have any other special guests that would like to take a minute to come up and introduce yourselves? I see she's coming. Good evening. My name is Krista Pettit with Haven Ministries. Um, just to let you all know, we have lots of clothing, hygiene items, if anyone needs those things, and food. There's a donation center from um, the generosity of the community that came into Ken Island United Methodist Church. Those items were given to us, and we'd like to give them to you. So we have plenty of items, household cleaning supplies as well. We have a lot of them next door. So after the meeting, please come and take some. Um, we'd love for you to be able to have them because they are for you. Um, the shelter is also open. If anyone needs um, does disaster relief shelter, we are open at Ken Island United Methodist Church at 5 p.m. and we're there all evening until the morning and then we also have a resource center for daytime services. So please see me. Um, the shelter is now open and it's ready to serve even if, it, even if it's on a temporary basis. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm my name is Dave Edgar, and I'm with uh, Metro Public Adjustment. I help people with their homeowners insurance. Uh, I'll, I'll be in the neighborhood. You'll see my literature. Thanks. Thanks. I'm Sergeant Sean Hampton with the Queen Anne's County Sheriff's Office. I'm here on behalf of Sheriff Gary Hoffman. Unfortunately, the sheriff has had a uh, recent death in the family, and he's with his family this evening as they laid to rest his grandmother. Uh, we will be on hand, myself and First Sergeant Earl Johnston, 
to answer any questions you guys might have, take any comments you guys might have. But I was really, really impressed. When I came down that morning, I called out of uh, a deep sleep and was told there was a storm. I came down and immediately saw the community pull together. And that right there is what the community is all about. So you guys deserve a round of applause. Thank you guys very much. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Todd Munn. Everybody's right now, what's on your mind is debris management. There's been a lot of questions, and I think Todd can pretty much answer most of them this evening, I hope. And we'll go from there. Todd? Thanks, Dave. Well, as everybody knows, our public works crews, the residents, the volunteers, the contractors have been down here since uh, last Monday working very hard to clean up the impacted areas by the tornado. Our main focus to date has been to get the trees, the limbs, and all of the stumps out of there and cleaned up. We secured a very large tub grinder from the Maryland Environmental Service and we've been grinding that vegetation up at our Bats Neck facility. The good news is we're keeping pace with the incoming loads and uh, we have processed over 25,000 cubic yards of material. In addition to that, we've taken away over 30 tractor trailer loads of mulched material. So we've uh, We've been busy down there, so if you haven't seen our operation, I'd encourage you to take a look. It's uh, pretty impressive. Now, we still have a lot of work to do, uh, but together, I think we've made tremendous, tremendous uh, progress in a very, very short time. So going forward, residents and volunteers can con continue to bring tree branches and limbs and other storm debris out along to the edge of the road, where our crews will be coming by and picking those materials up. And I believe as of today, we were pretty well caught up, but uh, I know stuff continues to come out you know, each and every day. So we'll be coming through, picking up those materials. We would ask the residents to please keep the wood debris and the logs and the uh, construction debris in separate piles because they go in separate areas so we can recycle those materials accordingly. Residents can also deliver materials directly to the Bats Neck facility, and we will recycle those or take them for disposal. We've opened up our facility, extended hours and days. We're open every day. We've been open every day of the week, including Saturdays and Sundays, uh, since this past Monday. That will continue through at least this week. Uh, every day we're open from 8 to 4, and most days they, they get down there a little earlier than that, around 7, to open the gates to allow folks to come in with materials. We will continue to reassess and assess community needs going forward in the future weeks, but I'm hoping over the next uh, several weeks we should be able to get pretty well caught up, but if you have any other special needs or uh, uh, impacts to your properties, please feel free to call our office. Our number is 410-758-0920, uh, or you can also contact me directly. My number is 410-490-3287. And I'll also say that you can keep in touch with us and schedule-wise, uh, we have a Facebook page, Queen Anne's County Public Works, like us on Facebook, and we have our schedules and updates on there accordingly. And, and lastly, I want to thank all the residents because we've, we've been out there, our guys have been out there, and it's, it's a lot of hard work, and it's been, uh, it's, been, it's been endless, it seems like. But the folks down here, the residents and the citizens, have been very nice and cordial to bring our guys water and cookies and other things, so that's very, very nice. They appreciate that very much. And we will be here to continue the cleanup efforts until we're, until we're wrap, wrapped up. So, thanks. Right now, I'd like to get a couple statements from our planning and zoning folks, Mike. Um, they're going to try to briefly talk about uh, some of the assistance they're going to be able to offer the folks during reconstruction. Thanks, Dave. Good evening. Thank you all for attending. My name is Mike Wisnowski. I'm the Director of Planning and Zoning and Permitting in Queen Anne's County. Uh, we're kind of like the next phase, the phase that you're going to see in the future. After the debris has been cleared and after you've worked out your arrangements with your insurance company, you or your contractor will have to come to us for a permit. I want to let you know that we're here for you. The fact that we're going to perhaps extend our hours if need be. Right now we're open from 8 in the morning till 4.30 in the evening. We're thinking about extending those hours if there is a need. We're also thinking about perhaps having a Saturday morning available for the folks who need to get their permit. The, the goal is to have that reconstruction begin as quickly as possible. So as soon as you are done uh, dealing with your insurance company, uh, 
like I said, your contractor or you will come to us next for a permit and we're going to expedite that process as quickly as possible. So uh, you can reach us at 758-4088. Uh, I also have business cards here. And I would also like uh, uh, Vivian Swinson to stand up because she's the one, she's the lady that you'll probably deal with the most in our office. She manages the permitting department. And we're here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Ma'am, you come forward. Hi, I'm relatively new to this area, so I don't know the permitting um, yeah. <laughs> rules. Vivian, so, why don't you join me? So I, if you could just give a quick outline of, or, or if you have a website that kind of outlines things, because I don't know if everything I need to do needs permits or not. Basically, Basically. on the county website, um, planning and zoning does have a web page that explains you when you need a permit and how to file a permit. If you have any questions, it's simpler to call the office and myself or one of the other clerks there will talk you through the process and help you as much as we can. The only thing we can provide for you is the building plans that will be needed to submit your permit. Site plans, helping you fill out the application and telling you which departments you need to talk to, we can help you with that. And is it um, the general custom here that the contractor obtains the permit? Is that the custom? No, you, as homeowner, you can file it yourself. Sure, it's either way. Yeah. It can either, either, either way. Yeah. yeah. All right, sure. thanks. Sure. Thanks. Thanks. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. In the beginning, uh, I would say probably as, uh, as uh, early as Tuesday, we had a lot of feedback already from the community that their cell phones were getting tornado alerts. Um, a lot of that is geo-based and it's through the various carriers that come from the National Weather Service. Um, we had tonight with us uh, Maria Parker from our office who handles our, our Everbridge uh, notification system. She'll be here to answer questions, but Maria, do you have anything? I just want to point out that I left some flyers on a table back there and if we run out, you can go to the county website for the uh, information to sign up for our voluntary alert system. A lot of you got cell phone alerts from the National Weather Service through a program called iPaws, which I'm happy to explain, but I'm not going to take up all your time now. We also have an opt-in system called Everbridge. And so if you sign up for Everbridge, you can receive alerts in any method you want, cell phone, text, uh, emails, house phones, or whatever. And I'll be here to answer your questions. Ever Everbridge. It's all one. Citizen, citizen alert. On the county website, I believe it's a citizen alert and an Everbridge somewhere smaller. And that's one of the questions that we're uh, national, uh, talking to the National Weather Service about. I've heard four to ten minutes, as, you, uh, as you've said. Um, we don't control that. It comes through the system itself. Uh, I can't, I'm not going to see her make excuses for it. I don't know if it was Verizon yet or who your carrier was. I don't know if it was the National Weather Service. I know it has to go through many steps. Uh, but the county, as well as Mer uh, Maryland Emergency Management Agency, we're investigating this now. Um, some of us know that the storm alert came out as a water spout at 1, uh, 127 that Monday morning and some people didn't get it till four or five minutes later and the tornado had already come through Bay City and it was on its way to Chester. So it is a concern. Why didn't it work? Uh, but I can assure you as the emergency management um, chief of the county, I'm going to find out why and we're going to work this out with our partners. At this point now, what I'd like to do is turn it over to you guys. You've, uh, you've heard enough from us. Chief, come forward, please. Um, way I want it to work, we're not going to really limit anybody, but please um, remember there's a lot of folks here tonight. Just please come up to the microphone and address your questions, and we'll try to get the right person to answer that for you. Hi, I'm Holly. What I'd like you to do when you find out the answers is for you to come back and tell us which one is the fastest. Yes, ma'am. So that we can subscribe to the one that will do us the most good. Thank yes. you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and the way we're going to address that is uh, this is this is not going to be the last of the town meetings. Um, I think with, uh, at the end of this, conclusion of this, we're going to make some decision as a whole because I'm here for you. Uh, do we need to do this monthly? Uh, however you want to do it. And we will be sending out notifications to the community of uh, what questions you pose to us tonight if we're not able to answer it. And we will get those answers for you. Hi, I, my name is Kathy Trotter. 
I just wanted to give accolades to everyone in our community. Being a Bay City resident, we're very fortunate. We only lost a few trees um, and holes in our fence. But there are a great group of people that have made a huge difference, including Lucy right here, along with Scott Saunders and Aaron Bresnick, who have gathered a tremendous amount of volunteers, strangers helping strangers, neighbors helping neighbors. They're like an army that's to be reckoned with. Also, Bridget Lundfeld, Steve McAdam from um, the Governor's Office of Community Initiatives that came through as well with volunteers. Um, Jim Roy with Economy Tree. Jim, your, your service has been amazing. <laughs> um, Steve Aaron, Steve Hershey, Greg Todd, getting porta potties on the streets where the volunteers were working. Little things like that make a huge difference so volunteers didn't have to knock on doors. And um, that's pretty much it. Thank you all so Thank you, much. Thank you, Kathy, so much. Our community coming together. Thank you. So we have a lot of folks here, and I'm sure that wasn't the only two questions. So take your time, come up, and, and please address. Hi, my name is William Turner. I live in, uh, on Bay City Road. And first of all, there were firemen at 2 o'clock in the morning coming through and making checking on us. They didn't just come at 6. And I mean, it's like I wasn't sure if my propane tank was open, and the guy just climbed right in and checked and made sure it was OK. I mean, I just, it was just phenomenal. Delmarva Power. We had a group that came from Salisbury and Milford, Delaware. They left at 6 o'clock on Monday morning. They worked through the, through the day and into the night, and they had the rest of Bay City's wires working the next day, and they were, they were great. We could, you could go over and talk to them. And they, I mean, when the first morning I said, I understand when I went online and told Delmarva that the power was out, it, they said it would be on by 4. The guy said, yeah, four on Friday. <laughs> but they kept on working on Tuesday. I had, I had gotten hold of an electrician guy in, in, um, in Graysonville, uh, Greg Roberts. He came and worked all day long, got everything set by 3 o'clock. We went over to the Delmarva guys and said, can you hook us up? You've got the wire going down there. Can you just pull the line across? And they did that. And then they said, well, you got to get your meter back. And we called the office for the meter, and they said, oh, I'm sorry, we closed at 3.30. And I went over to one of the guys on the line, and I said, listen, you guys have done a great job, and tomorrow we'll have power. And he said, wait a minute. And he called up, and an hour later, they had a meter, and we were electrified by, by Tuesday night. So I just, just phenomenal. But I hope you guys will write a letter to the guys that came in from out of the, away from here that, um, that they really pitched in and helped us get going, and the guys that were here, great. Um, my next door neighbor at one at 1:45 went was looking, checking on everybody. His his um, sister is a uh, uh, EMT, and he you know he was checking houses, asking if anybody was you know needed any help right then. I have a question for the permitting, and I just it, how much are we going to are we going to have to meet some of the newer codes? If we have problems like putting in sprinklers, are we going to have to do the heavier insulation in the walls? Or are the windows going to have to be brought to higher codes? Or can we get some kind of waivers? I'm just, I, you need to have to look at that and see whether, because we're going to have a lot of work to be done. And I just wonder whether we're going to have to meet all those newer codes or not. So I, everybody else has been so accommodating. Maybe the zoning could be. <laughs> all right. But again, I, that's, I don't know whether you can make that decision. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the permitting is going to be handled on a case by case basis. There no, there's no provision in the county code to waive you from the building code. So we'll have to work with you as much as we can. But if a code change happened when you come in with your permit, you have to comply with the current code. Okay. There's no grandfathering of the building code. Well, I know permit. that if you can help, you'll do it, Vivian. Yeah. I mean, we'll help you as much as we can, but some things are beyond our control. OK. I thought maybe the commissioners can change that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> 
I'm going to mess this up for you. Sorry. But I'd like to talk to the people from the front. I would like to add my special word of thanks to the Maryland Insurance Commission. Where are you? Special thanks because I had a very large maple tree in my backyard, which was about three and a half feet through in the base, and lightning struck it that morning and took a very large limb and broke it off that was resting on other large limbs of the maple tree. To add to that alarming picture was the fact that the part of the maple tree that it was resting on was also leaning toward my house. So. When I was alerted to it, I had it taken down and I had called my insurance company. They read me the limits of my policy and its wording and said, sorry, unless it destroys something or damages something, it doesn't cover that. Well, that bothered me. So I came here the next morning and I spoke with your folks, described the situation and they said, we'll reach out to them and see if there's something they can do. That day, I got a call from my insurance company. I'm purposely not naming names. I don't want to point fingers because I think there may be others in the crowd who may are having, may be having the same experience. My insurance folks came out. They looked at the situation. They listened to my story. They assured me that they would find a way to help me. And I got news today that they are going to help me. So please, if you have any insurance <laughs> questions at all, these folks are on our side. Thank you. Thank you. I'm an insurance broker. <laughs> and I was asked to go around the neighborhood and check on people to see if their insurance companies were taking good care of them. And I walked up Bay City Road, Buckingham, McKay, Zadie, and I went to every house, spoke to everybody that I could find. Their insurance companies had been responsive already. Had them one good question, and it hasn't been answered yet. A tree came down, hit two cars. They said, okay, you got two deductibles. And my question in my mind as an insurance broker is, one event, two cars under the same policy, why is that person being charged two deductibles? So that's something that, you know, maybe you will find when people come in here. But um, overall, the insurance companies have been do incredibly good. Thank and I, you. And I can tell you, your question about the deductibles, it's going to depend on the particular insurance contract because some of the car some of the contracts are written a little bit differently but if anybody encounters that get in touch with us and let us take a look at it basically we are there to make sure that whatever you're entitled to under the terms of your contract you're going to get Hello, I'm John Jalad from uh, McKay Road. Uh, we sustain probably a lot more damage than most. Luckily, our house is still standing, but probably every bit of 20 trees in our yard is completely leveled. Um, we're wondering, is this going to be considered a FEMA disaster zone? Um, and also, if, are, is there any state assistance? Because um, right now, it's a pretty substantial cost that we're having to bear to basically remove most of the trees and debris from our yard. Um, also, is there going to be help replanting some of those trees because we are in a critical area and we have nothing now to help us with any kind of drainage or anything like that? Um, and the other question I have is, uh, I guess the transformer exploded outside of our house and they completely dug out our ditch. Uh, is there going to be any assistance from the county to regrade and replant that ditch? Um, just a few questions. Well, let me address the uh, uh, state assistance and federal assistance uh, because that's going to be the, one of our next processes. Uh, we have 60 days to declare uh, emergency from both the state and from the federal 
and what we're trying to do now is compile our data to see what the total losses are. Uh, we're still early in, in the process of doing so, uh, and we're working with our partners at uh, Maryland Emergency Management Agency who will assist us putting together those numbers, getting to the thresholds that we need to hit in order to get federal assistance. So. Um, it's, it's a work in progress. Uh, it's one of the next steps into recovery, and it will be addressed, and we'll, we'll discuss that publicly once we do have those answers for you. Um, as far as repairs to ditches and infrastructure, and there, that'll be taken care of by the county. Okay. What about assistance with helping replant trees or any resources with that or anything like that, since we are in a critical area? Let me get Mike to answer that for you. Thank you. In a normal situation, if you're in a critical area and a tree dies and you take it down, you have to replace it one for one. Because this is a, natu a natural disaster, we're waiving that requirement, but there's no, there's no body or no funding available to go back in and revegetate that area. But you're not required to revegetate it because it's a nat natural disaster. Okay. Thank you. Yes, my name, my name is Jessica Testerman. I live at 518 Buckingham Drive. My house, they're going to tear it down. But they're saying only one business was lost, but I lost my business, which I do child care for 12 years. So I don't have a house, and I don't have a business. What can you do for me? So I came out to your house with uh, Maryland Emergency Management, uh, Jessica Newsbaum, and we met you briefly at the driveway, I think, one day uh, this past week. We'll be reaching back out to you. We're at, actually at your house today trying to uh, locate you to go over some more questions for you. Um, the, the state does have a small business administration that we can get loans for for folks and help find relocation uh, for your business. So we'll be in touch with you. Uh, when is Jess coming back? Monday? So. Give me the first of the week and we're going to come see you. And if you leave me your uh, cell phone number so I can reach out to you so we can organize a meeting and, and we'll get you, uh, try to get you back restored a little bit on this. Okay, okay thank you. Yes, Plus, I want to say thank you to everybody who volunteered to help and they just did a great job. The police and everyone, they were just great. Thank you all. Um, thank everybody here and thank a whole lot of people that I know have been working that aren't here. Um, they're probably still over there cutting. But um, probably for insurance or maybe at the state or higher level, um, there's some changes that I think need to be made, especially when people come out and say that they're making trees safe in your yard. Um, we know that if a tree is severely damaged and still 20, 50 or more feet high over top of a home, it's not safe. Um, we know that because a few days later when we got 17 mile an hour winds, trees were refalling on houses while we were trying to clear lots for people. Um, I think we need to, to get better standards on when a contractor is told by the insurance company to make it safe and no, no more than that, what is safe? Because um, a tree falling on you a second time isn't. Hi, my name is Becky. I live in Mainsail, so we are this smaller community, the only 45 homes that um, got hit before it crossed over and went up, and we live in the back corner. And behind our house is obviously community and then public county. There's a lot of dangerous trees, large trees hanging, and unfortunately the kids go back there. And so we just want to make sure that that area is looked at for safety, um, not only for our children, but anybody that goes back there. Hi, how you doing? My name is Daniel Parlett, uh, 607 Victoria. Um, I was trying to ask uh, anybody else that needs help with clearing out trees, debris. Um, I, I've been going hard since Monday morning and uh, you know, I lost a lot of time from work, and I've been trying to help out. Unfortunately, you know, I didn't have as much damage as a lot of people did. Um, is there anybody else? Is there a list that people that doesn't have the insurance that 
doesn't have the means to have the money to clear things out. Um, I, I know I met a few on Buckingham and, and McKay. Um, I, I work with a, my uncle is a local organization. Um, they're willing to come out. They've been out um, all week. Is there a list or anybody that knows anybody that needs, you know, help? Because I haven't heard that at all tonight. Who needs help? <laughs> okay, so um, I'm sort of an unofficial one of the volunteer leads of the volunteers for the recovery. Um, I'm not sure if we've had 607 Victoria on our list, but okay. Right, right. But what we've been doing, um, we kind of rolled in. It's a total grassroots movement. We're not authorized, you know, we're just here <laughs> to help. And what we learned, I've been through some tragedies of my own, and what I learned is just show up. And that's what we've been doing since, since it happened. The only way that we've been able to reach out to people is through Kent Island Happenings. And we've just been kind of posting almost every night. I'll go out there with a post that says, here's when we're gonna show up. It's usually 5.30, except for the weekends we were there like at 9 a.m. And all you need to do is just give us your address. We send unofficial people out to assess the situation and see if we can ha uh, safely help. And we've had people reach out to us. One of the people I want to give a shout out to is um, Josh Sutton of Open Site Excavation. Um, he's a local contractor in Graysonville. He just came up to me one night out of the goodness of his heart and said, I'm not going to walk around the community and hand out cards because I'm afraid these people are going to think I'm going to gouge them, basically. So I'm giving you my cards, but I'm here to tell you that I'm here to help them free of charge. And he's been rolling out in the community on some of the jobs that we as volunteers can't handle with his backhoes and all that stuff and helping. I will put you on the list. Yes. And they were out this weekend helping us on that beautiful Sunday when they could have been out on a motorcycle ride somewhere. The Kingsmen rolled in and helped us. Yes. 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 So if you reach out to us on that Kent Island Happenings or Facebook message me, it's Lucy, the last name is K-R-U-S-E. We'll get you on the list. We'll do whatever we can to help you. And we end up having people connect that have all kinds of services that they're willing to offer. We had one uh, fencing company come out and fix these people's fence where they're, one, one of them is disabled and one had just had surgery and the dogs were getting out. We had temporarily repaired it with mesh, but they came in and they said for free, they're gonna fix it because people care. So, you know, whatever insurance doesn't cover, we're here committed to help just because we care. Okay. Hi, my name is Debbie Stone. I'm on Zadie Lane. And the first thing I wanted to do was thank Lucy and their crew. I had an enormous amount of trees come down in my yard, and I would have been unable to really afford to pay for a tree service to come out. Um, and their crew came out and cleared them. It actually took about four days. I had a huge amount of trees. So, and the fact that the um, public works came out and offered the free curbside pickup was enormously helpful in, in clearing my yard also. So thank you. And I also wanted to share something that I found out um, through my insurance company that others might not know, that apparently a lot of insurance companies will give you credit for um, hours that you put into removing debris off of your deductible. So if you put in enough hours clearing your yard, hopefully you can kind of cover the whole deductible and it might help somebody out. Thank you. Good point. Okay. John McKay with, uh, from William Way. Chief Dave, commissioners, department heads, I'd like to commend all you fellas for the job you've done. I mean, you really stepped up. The community needed it. You've been there for us. And the, really the tip of the cap to your, your organization. Train as much as you need to train to do the job you've done. Thank you. I'm a little one, but I'm Lisa Daywalt. I'm at 608 Buckingham. And <laughs> I just want to say thank you to everyone. We have some special volunteers that came into 
our home, driving by our home, not even involved, their home was not involved in anything, and it's the Vogels. Jason and Katie and their family offered us food. Um, we have Dave Perry feeding the masses, pulling his, his, uh, on his, his huge barbecue out and feeding every worker that just walked by. And we have amazing, amazing neighbors. Fortunately, my neighbors were on vacation. They came home. But my husband running from door to door to check on neighbors with young children, and we don't have any at home. And just an amazing group of, this neighborhood is amazing. And I just want to say thank you. We don't have air conditioning yet. Our air conditioner blew away. But the Vogels came and brought us a unit. And we never met these people till the day of. And just amazing. We have a unit in the window. But we're going to make it. Everyone survived. And that's really, that, what really matters is no one was missing or injured seriously. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who's reached out to us, perfect strangers. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Andrea Kane, Superintendent of Schools for Queen Anne's County. And my heart goes out, our heart goes out to all of the families who have been affected by this tornado. And it sounds like such a wonderful, wonderful outpouring of support. But we like to add our support. We know that our students are sometimes having some trouble with, because this is a traumatic experience for our children. And we know that they're having some trouble. So we just want to let you know know that we are here to support you. We are lining up some support in terms of school counselors that will be able to help and support you and support your children. We're working on school supplies, working with our partners to make some collections so that children have what they need to start school ready, just like everyone else. So just want to offer our support, let you know that we are here. Sorry that our first time meeting is in this forum, but I want you to know that we're here for you. So we're looking forward to working with you and supporting you. Hi, my name is Inga Peters and I run a rescue in Bay City. I'm here for the pets. If anybody has any lost cats, dogs, we go out and we look for them. We've helped several of you find your lost cats. I was out last night till two o'clock trying to help find some. So just reach out to us, we're here for you, okay? We're on Facebook and we're called Saving Future Feral Cats. Thank you. With all you folks out there, somebody else might want to speak. Do we have anybody else? New takers, is Mark, uh, Reverend Mark Fernell in here? Uh, somebody said you were here? He's hiding. <laughs> Commissioner Steve Wilson. I just want you folks to know there's nothing whatsoever that we commissioners take more seriously than the health and safety of the citizens. Uh, when we first came in office within the first two weeks, we commissioned the best person we could find in the state of Maryland to come up with an emergency plan, which we continually review. That man sitting right there, he's now elevated to being the head of the emergency planning for the state of Maryland, and he's a wonderful cooperative force, particularly since he was our, our personal first uh, emergency planner. So we really uh, are, could not be more involved in this thing. I want to talk a little bit about kind of the sadness of seeing all these pretty trees die besides the economic loss. There's a kind of aesthetic loss that goes on and it, it's not going to come right back, but the community will get better over time. But I just, it is a little bit of a sad note when something that's been growing and shading your house is all of a sudden gone on a, on a whim of nature. And on a more frivolous note, I would like to tell you that we have got together an exciting video for you called Tornado, which will be up, I think, on our, can George? George, wake up. Is that video gonna be up on the website this weekend? George says probably. Anyway, if you wanna see a, 
helicopter video of this thing, you will get a good view of it. Thank you very much for all you've done and for being yourselves. Hi, good afternoon. Um, my name is Pastor Amor Woolsey. I can't talk to people back here. Like, I need to do it. That's not the best side of me. <laughs> I am preaching. Well, I'm Pastor Amor Woolsey. I uh, represent Kent Island United Methodist Church. I'm the associate pastor, and our, our senior pastor, Mark Fernell, is unable to be here this evening. But um, I've seen many of you very familiar faces. And, um, you know, we've been pretty much the center of where all the donations from all over has been. And there's just so much love has just poured into in, as soon as we empty out our fellowship hall it's time to it's filled back up again and the, this is just the outpouring of the community over the bridge through the bridge up in delaware and it's just been such a great way to see the body of christ working that way and um, also just i wanted to put it out there our church has a designated fund for tornado victims and so there's no income requirements or things of that sort and we hope to it's our prayer that we can help our community rebuild fill in the gaps where insurance doesn't quite cover things like uh, a deductible for a car. We're helping a young family with their deductible of a car or deductibles of insurance or helping pay for maybe a down, for maybe a security deposit for a new place that you need to rent out. And so that's our hope and prayer that we're doing with this designated fund as we rebuild our community t again. And so um, if you have any questions or, or whatnot, you can call us at the church office. Our number there is 410-643-5361. And uh, you could email me at amor, A-M-O-R, at K-I-U-M-C dot O-R-G. And the church is here to help uh, our brothers and sisters here in our community. Thank you. Thank you, Father. This may be the religion section of the uh, announcements. <laughs> I'm Father Mark Del Cues. I'm at Christ Church Parish uh, down the way at Roman Coke Road. We have a uh, gift cards and uh, and all kinds of things that we can do to help as well so we're just down the way uh, we had just fought a battle over trees um, with the FAA about our cemetery and God blessed us in that it didn't take down any trees in the cemetery it was it was messed up on the way in but once you got in there was not any damage done at all so the wisdom of those in 1651 that built there uh, were on the right track again father mark at CCPKI Org, and I've got gift cards for local businesses. I've only gotten gift cards from local organizations because we need to remember that our community will rebuild as we buy within this community. It's easy to get on the internet and buy something for cheap, but we need to support our local businesses as we're doing this work. So I don't want to be a microphone hog, but one of the things that has been happening with this volunteer effort is we kind of listen to what the people say, and then people go, hmm, I have an idea. So one thing I've heard here is that obviously you've lost some amazing trees in your neighborhood, and I know that's a stress as well. And I'm thinking, just like we went out and asked if there were people who would be willing to donate repairs to the fence, I'm thinking next thing I'm going to be doing is putting a call out to see if there are any, um, what am I trying to say, landscapers, et cetera, that want to roll out and donate some trees to your community. And my guess is they're going to come rolling out. So we're going to do that. It occurs to me that the county, as, they, as people take houses or, or take out woods, sometimes instead of planting more trees, the county is given money that they would plant trees and, to replace them. And I was wondering if there's any money in that fund that might be, go to the critical area lands in Bay City. Yeah, I'd, um, Fitz, I'm not sure we have it uh, specifically designated. What we typically do is, as the projects come in, those trees get planted. They'll fund it, but then we plant them off-site, so we'll have to look into that. Um, but there are, you know, there's always, uh, DNR's got the program with the trees, so there's, and they're, they're whips, so they're small. But there are, there are sources available, so we'll keep an eye open well, and, and do what we can do. And Fitz, you've talked twice tonight, well, so I no know. more. I, okay. <laughs> Sit down. I want to I just say that I really, I had a lot of, as long as I'm while I'm here, Come on, man. I had a lot of trees. I lost 17 trees, 200-year oaks, 
And, um, and I want to also put out a, a thank you to Economy. Uh, Bartlett came in and, and took down trees. And it's just the tree guys. And watching them up in the, in the air, pulling those things out. I mean, my next door neighbor had a, had a 10 foot branch into his living room and they pulled it out and he's, the house is not too bad off. I mean, it's just phenomenal, these guys. And, and their willingness to get into these trees for us. I just, I, I, thank, I thank you to them too. Anything else from anybody? Maybe? Awesome. Gentlemen, thank you all for being here, ladies. Um, it's amazing how reliant we are on our cell phones. If, in fact, we lost cell phone service, what would be your recommendation to a homeowner, family man? What should we do as a backup? I don't have a home phone line. Even if I did, it probably wouldn't have worked. But. So everybody's getting away from the wired house phone. I know I have a long time ago. It was a nuisance. Uh, we depend on technology way too much, but that's where we are today. Uh, one of the things that we can do is recommend using battery-powered uh, weather telephones or weather radios. I'm sorry. Uh, it's directly to NOAA, and you will get alerts directly from that. I think it's going to be one of those lessons learned. I know the school system has them, and we've uh, we were able to get a grant. Oh, how many years ago, and, and uh, that afforded us to distribute them through the school. But they're very inexpensive. Very well, but I guess the, uh, to be able to communicate to whether I'm calling 911, if the cell phone service was down, should we go by CB radio backups, the old VHS. school? What, what was that? VHS. VHS. So we got to get on the boat and talk on the VHS? Well, I mean, that's, if you've got it, that's a great solution. Gentlemen, thank you. Yep, thank you. We're going to be putting together a uh, hotline with all information for phone numbers because tonight we're just getting started. Um, I, say again? Well, great answer. Great question. And we're going to, uh, we, Todd and I talked about today. I think what we're going to try to do is get through Friday and see where we're at with our, with our curbside cleanup and then, and then make the, Right. How many trips did it take you to the dump? I mean, I watched them on the speed of them. Right. Very questions and give them what they needed. Yeah, that, that is something. That's what we needed. And we, yeah, I think Todd and I are going to talk about it again. We're going to try to get, try to get that taken care of. So, but we're addressing it. Thanks. <laughs> what about dumpsters? We heard you were going to have some dumpsters. Yeah, that's just what we were talking about, Don. So, dumpsters. That's what the discussion was. So, we're going to. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna like we said we're gonna try to get through Friday, get the curbside stuff cleaned up because we've still got a lot of stuff coming to the curb, and then go from there. So we, we want to kind of get a handle on that first before we we release the dumpsters, but that's definitely on our list. So what's that? We're, right, we understand that we're we're going to get dumpsters. Give us till Friday, okay? Thank you. I know, and thank you for cooking. So I don't think that's our, the, dump, the one in front of the pavilion, that's, that's not counties. Nope. So we'll develop the hotlines. So we'll have information on that, and we'll be able to get that ever to everybody. Uh, I will be partnering up with various uh, Bay City I know has a uh, uh, Facebook page. We'll be reaching out to there. We will be disseminating information every way we can. Um, I got to thank our partners from the media. I know some folks said, well, they were a little bit overwhelming. I get that, but they were just trying to share your story. Uh, they have been a great partner with us trying to make sure that the word got out. Uh, uh, you know, that's all I can say is really thank to them. Um, I like to say on behalf before uh, um, Greg finishes up for us tonight, um, it's been an honor serving this community, and I think I speak for all first responders, regardless of what agency they represent. <clears throat> it's been our honor and privilege, and I'm sorry that you're going through this, but we are truly here for you, and whatever your needs are, we will do our best to meet those needs. Um, and before Greg comes up, <laughs> um, 
we need to have this meeting again. And this is, like I say, when I started tonight, this is the first one, but not the last one. So are you folks looking maybe at a month intervals every two weeks? What do you, what do you think's best? You think a month will give you enough time to get things turned around and we can come back and address some of the issues tonight so we can share that information with you and then see what the new unmet needs are at a later time? I can't hear you, man. Could you? Sorry. That the, if we're going to meet here again, it would be nice. Okay. So if that's in three weeks, then that's fine, and people will uh, then have a chance to figure out what they want to talk to you about, too. Maybe we just weren't ready this time. Well, my good friend Sid sitting over there has accommodated us whatever we need. Whatever this community needs, they will accommodate us. And after hours, we will work that out. And we can continue to meet here. I think it worked out well, and we're very centralized. So I think it'll be very convenient for the community. So uh, say what, two to four weeks? Sure. Two, yeah. two weeks. So, so be it. We'll do two weeks. We'll get it out. I will put the signs up out front again in the entranceways of the community so we can confirm that. But if you look at two weeks from today, we will make that happen. And Sid knows now, sir. Um, my lovely girlfriend brought something to my attention. She works for the United States Postal Service, uh, the Chester Division, and she just wants, she was like, people have been putting stuff in front of the mailboxes, and it makes her, her job and uh, everybody there else a little bit harder. So if you kind of like keep the stuff away from the mailboxes so you all can get your mail, your Amazon, your, your all that stuff. So she was like, what about the mail? What about the mail? So I was like, all right, well, I'll say something. <laughs> Um, yes, um, that's another thing she said, half people don't have mailboxes. Um, I guess you have to call your local post postmaster, as she said, to, to figure that out, what you want done with your mail. But, you know, that's another thing. People need mail. People need packages because everybody orders it. To add to that, one of the things that most people have on their mailboxes is their house numbers, correct? Remember, if you're missing your mailbox or if something's happened to house numbers in your home, try to make something to where we can get there and help you if you need help. All right, we're eager to help, and that's one thing that will get us there quicker and allow us to provide a better level of service or visible house numbers. So just remember that. It's little things we miss. Uh, this is amazing. You guys have done a great job. Thank you very much for coming out from the sheriff's office. It's not the end, but we'll see you guys in two weeks. Thank you. Okay, we're going to wrap this up. I want to thank everyone for coming out. I also, there's one person that I, that he's he's been in charge and has been thanking everyone. But I think we, David Rivet, has just been phenomenal. And his his boss, Scott Haas, Scott's our uh, director of emergency services. Uh, he was here through it all. He called me Tuesday in a panic. Said I've got a vacation planned. He goes, but I don't want to go. I think I need to stay here. I said go mainly because I'm scared to death of his wife and I didn't want to get in trouble. But I also knew that he had a great team and we'd be able to handle it. So thank you guys. Be safe going home, and we'll see you in two weeks. <laughs>